Hello, friends, and welcome to Grits in the Gospel on this second Sunday of Easter. I hope that your Easter was filled with good food and family and worship and uh, celebration and um, laughter. Um, and I am thankful that you have come back to join me today for the second Sunday of Easter. Let us come together today in a posture of worship. The Lord be with you and also with you. We have two readings today. The first is Psalm 133. It is a short psalm, just three verses. Hear now the words of the psalmist. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. And now to the epistle, the first letter of John, chapter 1. Hear now those words of John. We declare to you that was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it, to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, as the spring storms have been rolling in this week, as the gray skies have overtaken us, we pray for your light to shine in the darkness, brighter than any storm, brighter than any gray sky. Your light and your love shine bright. Hear us now as we pray the words that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The lectionary is obsessed with Doubting Thomas. Every year, on the second Sunday of Easter, we take a day to give Thomas a good tongue lashing. I feel sorry for the guy. The other disciples got to see Jesus after his resurrection to help them believe, but we have made it so no one ever says Thomas's name without the doubting in front of it. Part of the challenge of preaching through the lectionary is that certain texts come up every year. There are only so many ways we can redeem Thomas. So I took a little extra time this year and thought about the scripture. As I continue to see the scripture with fresh eyes, I hope that you will be open to that same thing as well. Hear now the words of the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. The story of Thomas. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them, and they said to them, and then said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nail, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the present of presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written so that you may come to believe that jesus is the messiah the son of god and that through believing you may have life in his name the word of god for us the easter people of god thanks be to god the NFL draft is right around the corner, a time when college players will make life-changing decisions and teams will get to fill their rosters with positions where they are lacking. The NFL Combine was just a few weeks ago. It's a chance for potential rookies to showcase their athletic abilities. It's also a chance for them to showcase their skills during press conferences. One in particular stood out to me. Tyler Owens from Texas Tech got up for his chance to speak and then things got a little, uh, shall we say, strange. He doesn't believe in space. He claims to be religious, but does not believe that space and other planets are a real thing. He is also not convinced that the earth is round. He doubts. He doubts science. 
He doubts what smart people have told him. And now I doubt the education system with which he grew up in. I doubt the science department at Texas Tech. I doubt his ability to make good decisions on the field because he can't make good decisions in the classroom. Now when I see anything about Tyler Owens, all I think is that he doesn't think God is big enough to have created space. We've done the same to Thomas. In every other gospel, we only see Thomas in a list of disciples. No other stories are in the gospels about him. But we know that any time the group of disciples is mentioned, he is there. He was there for the healings. He was there for the teachings. He was there to care for the people that were following Jesus. There's an apocryphal text about Thomas, but that is all based after the time of Jesus, if you want to throw that in for fun. In that text, he is martyred for his beliefs. Despite all of the good that he did while he was working with Jesus and all of the good he did spreading the good news after the death of Jesus, all we see is this one event. He is saddled with the doubting despite all of the other good that he has done. Whether it is warranted or not, see last year's sermon on Thomas, this one moment overshadows all of the other parts of his life and ministry. His faith becomes almost irrelevant because of this one story. It was very convicting for me to think about this week as I prepared. When people look at me, what word do they put in front of my name? Is there something that defines who I am that is overshadowing the faith I have and the love of Jesus that I'm trying to share? These days, it's easy for other things in our life to block the good we try and do. For me, impatient comes to mind. I don't like waiting for things, and it often can manifest in harmful ways. Impatient Katie is not a good version of myself that I want people to see. But for some people, it's all they see. In the world these days, it's easy for people to let who they vote for define who they are. No matter the ballot you choose on primary day, if you let your views on politics or government or the news overshadow your love of God, it can start to define who you are. If you are judgmental or unkind, it can be the thing that people remember instead of the times when you were loving. The question is, what in my life gets put before my name? There are many things that I like to have occupy that place of honor. My current favorite is Aunt Katie. I love being that crazy aunt, not only to my own nieces and nephew, but to my friend's children. They both think I'm super fun and know that they can come to me for advice. I have been referred to as Crazy Aunt Katie, and I'm here for it. Preach or rev are words in front of my name that I'm starting to feel worthy of and living into. Being seen as someone who is helpful and a resource for people's faith is a great thing to have put before your name. But those are really specific. I think it's the bigger ideas that I want to have put before my name. No matter what title I have, I want to be known as loving and loyal, kind or joyous. I want people to see me as those beautiful things more than anything else. Because if I am loving, I am loving to my nieces and nephew and to everyone I minister to. If I'm kind, I'm kind to my friends and those who are suffering around me. If I'm joyous, I'm joyous with my classmates and with those who are in need of hope. If I let those other things in life outshine the good things, then my name becomes associated with things that are not of God. 
judgment, hate, and anger, even though they may only be happening in moments, can easily take the place of the things of my faith that I want people to see. I don't want people to have to look for the good in my life before they believe in the God I am trying so earnestly to reflect. They should not have to wade through the darkness to hear Jesus say, Peace be with you. So I have to keep reminding myself, choose to show love, choose to show kindness, choose to spread joy. Those are the words I want said in front of my name. No matter what the world tells us we should be mad about these days, we have to choose the love and the light of Christ. Because my fear is that if I do not choose those good things, all people will see is the moments that I let the world tell me what to do. All people will see is the moments where I let my guard down and let others besides Jesus tell me how to live. Loving Katie, not doubting Thomas. I'll take that any day. Tyler Owens piqued my interest. How could someone believe all of that? So I went and looked up his stats from college. He was pretty mediocre on the field. He was plagued by injury during his time in college. So maybe all that crazy talk of not believing in space was just to distract the teams he is trying to be a part of that he was not an amazing athlete on the field. But if that's true, then I'm doing the exact same thing that we do to Thomas. Even with his injuries and lackluster stats, he is a hundred times the athlete that I am. He's had moments of greatness on the field. But those things are now a mere footnote because of something that distracts from his athletic career. We'll see in a few weeks if he gets to go on and play in the NFL. Despite his doubting label, Thomas was still a great disciple and later a preacher in the early church. And as for me, I will continue to work to keep words like aunt and reverend, kind and loving in front of my name. I want them to overshadow things like impatient rigid or absent-minded? Is there something in front of your name that you would like to change? What word do you hope is placed there in other people's minds? What legacy do you hope to leave? Is it faithful or gentle? Is it kind or generous? I am sure Thomas would be thrilled if we drop the doubting and used believing instead. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that through believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Here now the words of the benediction as we go out into the world. Let us be believers and have love and kindness and joy and faithful put in front of our names. Because in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.